good afternoon all uh, uh, myself prem kumar uh, i'm working with professor sundarishan uh, at jnc sir uh, first of all i would like to thank organizers uh, for giving me this opportunity to present our work today i'm going to talk about uh, uh, observation of elliptical cycloidal phase and spin driven multiferocity in gd2 bsc05 so before going to show the discuss the results of this compound i will briefly tell what are multiferroics uh, we know like there are uh, materials uh, magnetic in nature uh, in which uh, some of them are uh, ferromagnetic or antiferromagnetic or ferrimagnetic analogous to this there are materials which are electrically polarizable uh, which are known as the dielectrics uh, so in which some of the materials are uh, ferroelectric so like we know to observe the uh, magnetic magnetism we need uh, uh either unpaired, unpaired d electrons or f electrons uh, similarly to uh, observe the ferroid city we need uh, uh, empty or uh, fully filled uh, d orbitals so due to this uh, chemical incompatibility uh, combining both these properties in single material it is uh, uh, difficult but there are materials uh, in which both these properties coexist and couple to each other which are known as multiferroics so multiferroics are uh, simply uh, uh, materials in which uh, both uh, magnetism and ferroelectric orders coexist. So again, uh, based on the uh, mechanism of ferroelectricity, they are further classified into two types. Uh, in type one, the ferroelectricity and magnetism have uh, different origins. Uh, for example, uh, in these materials, uh, due to lone pair effect or geometric frustration, which is corresponding to a site cation uh, which is giving rise to ferroelectricity whereas b site magnetic ion is responsible for the magnetism unlike these materials in type 2 multiferroics uh, uh, in type 2 multiferroics uh, uh, ferroelectricity or, originated from the uh, certain type of magnetic ordering for example uh, magnetic structures like uh, collinear up up down down or non collinear magnetic structures like uh, cycloidal or conical uh, breaks the inversion symmetry and gives rise to uh, ferroelectricity so uh, with strong magnetoelectric coupling, uh, these type two multiferroic uh, materials are promising for the applications like uh, four state magnetoelectric random access memory, spin wave generation, domain wall devices, frequency conversion, et cetera. So however, uh, material to show these uh, multiferroic properties, there are some symmetry requirements. Like as we know, material to be ferroelectric, it must uh, break the spatial inversion symmetry, whereas in uh, all long range magnetic order systems like ferromagnets and antiferromagnets, the time reversal symmetry is broken. Similarly, material to be multiferroic, it must break the both spatial inversion and time reversal symmetry. So we have been working on uh, working to find the new type two multiferroics. Uh, along this line, uh, we have uh, worked on uh, uh, a family of compounds with chemical formula r 2 bsco 5 where R is rare earth. So it depends on the uh, ionic size of the this rare earth ion uh, these uh, compounds mostly crystallize in uh, two different phases uh, with higher size rare earths uh, from lanthanum to neodymium they crystallize in tetragonal structure where the copper ions are situated in uh, uh, square planar coordination and which are known as brown phases uh, whereas uh, smaller size cations from samarium to lutetium including yttrium they crystallize in centrosymmetric orthorhombic structure with uh, space group pnma which are also uh, which are well known as uh, green phases when we look at the uh, crystal structure of these green phases uh, copper is in uh, distorted square pyramidal uh, coordination along with this uh, another interesting feature of this structure is there are two uh, there are two different sites for the rare earth though their coordination is same but uh, their environment is completely different as we can see from this figure one of the rare earth site is uh, coordinated uh, surrounded by the six copper ions with bond angles close to 180 degree, whereas the other site is surrounded by the three copper ions with bond angles close to 90 degree. So therefore, the effective molecular field by the copper at each rare earth site is different. Since like there are no copper, copper or copper, oxygen, copper bonds in the structure for the magnetic exchange, uh, the possible magnetic interaction path is through rare earth. The, uh, therefore, due to the competition between copper, copper or rare earth, rare earth, and rare earth copper, which is 4F3D coupling interactions. These compounds exhibit very interesting magnetic properties. Also, uh, crystal field excitations and magnetic anisotropy associated with each rare earth is different, which means uh, due to which each uh, uh, 
rare earth, each compound with a different rare earth, they can show interesting magnetic properties. And, and indeed, we found that uh, all the compounds from this family exhibit uh, interesting magnetic properties and thereby magnetoelectric or multiferroic properties. Today, I'm going to discuss only about uh, uh, GD2 BS EOFI results uh, as confirmed by the magnetism, uh, magnetic and heat capacity measurement. These compounds exhibit uh, two magnetic transition. One is at 11.8 Kelvin, which is long range antiferromagnetic ordering of gadolinium and copper spins. And another transition uh, is at 6 Kelvin, which is lock, which is lock in transition. Why is it so? Uh, I will be telling in my later slides. And uh, unlike other compounds from this family, uh, where they exhibit uh, individual transition for the rare earth or copper spins. This compound exhibit uh, simultaneous ordering of gadolinium and copper spins at TN 11.8 Kelvin. So the possible reason for this can be, uh, since gadolinium has ground state uh, state, uh, which means there are no crystal field, uh, there are no crystal field effects. So it can easily accept the uh, spin induced by the uh, movement, movement induced by the copper spins in the magnetic interaction path and order along with the copper itself. So further, dielectric constant showed uh, two clear anomalies at both the magnetic transitions, uh, confirming that uh, confirming the presence of magneto dielectric coupling. With increasing the magnetic field, the uh, dielectric anomaly at uh, locking transition disappeared about uh, uh, disappeared above 0.7 Tesla. And there is a suppression of dielectric uh, anomaly at TN with uh, under high magnetic field. So the presence of magneto dielectric coupling is an indication, initial indication for the compound can be multiferric. So can this compound is multiferric? But uh, polarization in these multiferric materials is very le uh, less as compared to the conventional ferroelectrics. So by using PE loop measurement, we cannot measure the uh, polarization in, in the case of multiferrics. So we have opted for the uh, pyrocurrent measurement, uh, which I have shown here, and the corresponding polarization is shown here. When we look at the pyrocurrent data, there are two clear uh, pyrocurrent peaks uh, at both the magnetic transitions, indicate uh, confirming that this compound is uh, type 2 multiferroic. With increasing the magnetic field, the pyrocurrent peak at uh, T lock in transition disappeared and started appearing in opposite direction. And we think with further increasing the magnetic field, it increases towards the uh, high temperature side. So what does that mean? So the magnetic structure uh, uh, below T lock in transition, which is allowed, allowing the ferroelectricity initially, which is changed like above 0.7 Tesla and does not allow uh, ferroelectricity anymore. So which uh, appeared as a opposite pyrocurrent peak. And Further, like uh, the switching behavior of the observed polarization and the DC bias current measurements, further suppose the intrinsic nature of the observed ferroelectricity. So our experimental results confirmed that uh, this compound GD2 BSE of a compound is uh, uh, type 2 multiferroic. However, to understand the origin of uh, uh, multiferroicity, we need to know the magnetic structure of this compound. So when we look at the literature, uh, the magnetic structure of this compound is reported. But however, it is reported to be P1 bar, which is centrosymmetric, and which means uh, it does not allow uh, multiferroicity. But our experimental results suggest that uh, it is multiferroic. So we have contacted the authors of this paper. And thanks to him, they have agreed to share their neutron data for reanalysis. For, uh, so reanalysis of neutron diffraction data confirmed that this compound exhibit incommensurate magnetic ordering at 11.8 Kelvin with modulation vector 0, 0, G. And further, it exhibits commensurate magnetic ordering with K vector 0, 0 of at lock in transition 6 Kelvin. So uh, firstly, we have analyzed the uh, magnetic structure at 1.3 Kelvin, which means uh, which is below uh, lock in transition. Uh, correspond, uh, with commensurate K vector 0, 0 of and uh, paramagnetic space group PNMA, there are six possible magnetic solutions corresponding to uh, two irreducible representation. And the correct solution found to be PC21CA, which is polar and allows the ferroelectricity along the, uh, uh, with polarization along X direction. And the uptime magnetic structure is shown here, which is strongly non-collinear. And further, we have uh, analyzed the uh, neutron diffraction data at 9.8 Kelvin, which is below TN and above T lock-in 
So in this region also, we have observed the magnetic symmetry polar. And the most important thing is uh, the upturned magnetic structure is uh, elliptical cycloidal structure. Like as we know, elliptical cycloidal structure breaks the inversion symmetry according to inverse jalousinski mori interaction and allows the uh, polarization. So our experimental results, including neutron diffraction, confirmed that uh, uh, the GD2 BSEO5 compound is uh, type 2 multiferroid. So the magnetic structure which I have shown here, we, which is in uh, within one magnetic unit cell. When we look at the global view of the magnetic structure, uh, the, this is how it looks. Uh, and uh, it, is, it is formed by a combination of uh, uh, different cycloids corresponding to each magnetic ion. And with uh, decreasing the temperature, the modulation vector changes and finally locks into 0, 0 off at 6 Kelvin and it becomes commensurate. That's why uh, the transition at 6 Kelvin is called T lock in transition. So, in summary, uh, the GD2 BSEO of a compound exhibit uh, uh, both incommensurate and commensurate magnetic structures at 11.8 Kelvin and 6 Kelvin. And more, uh, moreover, it exhibits multiferocity in both the phases. So I will end my presentation by saying that this compound uh, uh, belongs to the rare class of materials uh, where they exhibit both incommensurate and commensurate magnetic structure and multiferocity in both the phases. So in acknowledgement, I would like to thank uh, Professor Ajandreshan for his constant support and uh, his guidance. And I thank Professor Yuan from ILL and Professor Golsworski from Russia for, the, for their help with uh, neutron diffraction data and uh, Dr. Nikita from uh, Russia for his help with uh, symmetry explanation. Thank you. I think I have missed it. So your sample polycrystal or single? Yeah, in this case, it is polycrystalline sample. Okay. Uh, since the upper volatile nature, we could not grow the single crystal. Uh, here it's polygraph. Any more questions? If not, let's thank Prem Kumar.